be with you and to your spirit reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you o lord at that time jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of simon and andrew with james and john now simon's mother in law lay ill with a fever and immediately they told him about her and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and the fever left her and she began to serve them that evening at sunset they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons and the whole city was gathered together at the door and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him and rising very early in the morning while it was still dark he departed and went out to a desolate place and there he prayed and simon and those who were with him searched for him and they found him and said to him everyone is looking for you and he said to them let us go on to the next towns that i may preach there also for that is what i came for and he went throughout all galilee preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons the gospel of the lord my dear sisters and brothers in christ when we were having a catechism classes maybe i was when i was a teenager every year we have this course called intensive bible course so we have a curriculum to follow so it's just like any school academic levels there is year 1 year 2 year 3 you have to do 12 years of your catechism higher secondary we call it 12 years of catechism recently not before last sunday sunday after 26th of january my nephew finished his 12th grade in catechism and after the exam before the exam he called me for prayers and after the exam he called me and the only thing he did was a great sigh <sighs> it's over you know so <laughs> i asked him what happened to you no uh, he calls me uncle no uncle it is uh, oh finished it's over no more to go back there so um 12 years of catechism and every year we have three days of intensive bible course and in this intensive bible course what they do every year they take a theme from the bible and they have games and they have uh, different kinds of activities regarding it according to the age group So when I was in the high school during 7 8 and 9 and 8 9 and 10 there was a competition as part of this take a story from the bible and then put it into your word you you say the story in your word so i took the story of the good samaritan good samaritan story and uh, instead of the levite the priest i put the name of the assistant parish priest and i put the name of um, a name of our sacristan so i made that story like that but some other friend one of my friend he took this story of the mother in law of simon and andrew he enumerated in such a way that he at the end told jesus was so selfish the story goes like this after healing a person in the synagogue the previous story is that he is he heals a uh, he heals a genesaret yes a man with an unclean spirit he healed and after that he had to walk long to reach the house of simeon simon by the time he reached home he was so hungry he wanted to eat something not just him another 12 with him 
So Simon took him home, thinking that food is ready. But when he got home, he knew the mother-in-law is ill. So Jesus said, okay, Simon's wife is there. Andrew's wife is there. Let them cook. Simon and Andrew looked face to face. Jesus, that is risky. Because their cooking will never match the cooking of my mother-in-law. You should taste her cooking. Jesus had no other way. So Jesus went to her. What happened? I'm feverish, I can't stand. Jesus said, come get up, cook for us. <laughs> she got up, cooked. She, fever left her because Jesus was hungry. Praise the Lord. That was the end of the story. Making Jesus a selfish person and healing because and I was I was really having that doubt from that moment onwards if that was the case why didn't Jesus eat from outside or cook something or he, he asked at the table he sits at the table let the food come it should have come praise the Lord yes. hallelujah yes. hallelujah the gospel passage today we would find certain selfishness in spiritual life coming here the latter part of the story the next day morning Jesus woke up early in the morning and he went to pray the disciples came in search of Jesus and what was they looking for in Jesus why did they come in search of Jesus they came to Jesus and told Jesus everyone is searching for you right everyone is searching for you and what could be the reason people are searching for Jesus? Healing, right? Healing. They were coming in search of Jesus so that last evening the whole city came around the gate of that or door of that house. Jesus healed many. Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, healed many from demon possession. Now everyone has come because they had some sickness and they wanted to get some healing. Now, now you look at the answer of Jesus. What is the answer of Jesus? Let us now go to the other cities. I need to go and... What is the word used there? Preach. It is not that I need to go there and heal. Do you find any difference? Jesus is saying... I need to go and preach. I need to go to preach. I need to tell them about my father in heaven. I need to tell them about repentance. I'm sent not just to heal, but I am sent to preach. How focused was Jesus on his ministry? Hallelujah. 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 If just give a thought, just like my friend, who said that story if Jesus was so selfish to take the glory of what he was doing he would have stayed on one more day and he would have announced Jesus is staying in the city so everyone who wants to get healed come and get healed they would have come and got the healing and Jesus would have been so famous would have got a great following but that was not his intention. He knew why he was sent. He was sent to lead the people to repentance. The right way to show them the right path. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes what happens with us this. We are made to make a choice. We are made to make a choice. Either just a blessing or a transformation of life. Either holiness or a healing. We might go for that healing because that is what I am suffering from. But through it, before that healing, the Lord might be wanting you to go uh, to lead a holy life. Just think of the gospel according to Saint Mark, chapter two, the next one, healing of the paralytic. Just the continuation of what Jesus teaches. Jesus, this man was brought before Jesus. Jesus said, "Your sins are forgiven." He didn't say you are healed. Because Jesus knew 
healing is just a subsidiary or an accent an accessory the main is repentance that's why jesus says i need to go around preach not heal praise the lord praise hallelujah more than preaching healing brings glory to jesus but jesus did not choose that he chose the way the father has told him and that is why definitely he said from his heart lord father thy will be done thy will be done when i became priest or you know the life of life to priesthood is 12 years of formation it's not very easy sometimes to go through this 12 years there are a lot of struggles in between a lot of studies you have to make and then practical formation start to preach or giving homilies it's not it's not very easy to face uh, a group of people sitting in front of you and then uh, talking to them even when how much preparation you make and you go if the grace is not there the holy spirit is not giving anointing is not there it's not it's not very easy you might even cry you might even cry so this this uh, this process is a big process a long process and there are so many leaving behind so many leaving priesthood so when i was going through that formation of 12 years maybe it was at around year 7 or 8 in the formation that my people around me got took me serious you know when i went to the formation they all thought okay like anyone he is going he might become priest or might not they supported me prayed for me thinking that he might come back you know that that bracket they have given that margin they have given me and i was happy that they gave that margin also and after that when i became when i got my cassock or when i announced that after this year i'm going to receive my cassock they all became very serious because that is a that's a bigger step they all became very serious and they took me serious and they continued with my studies when i when they all took serious they all started to appreciate my father and my mother saying that wow you're going to have a priest in your home so for every, every function you're going to have a priest you know a priest for your home in olden days they used to say you have an elephant at home that was a that was a big what what they so the status symbol so sometimes they say you have a priest as a status symbol then my dad also was very happy he shared that with me one day everyone is saying no other family has a priest nearby i mean there is another one who got ordained with me but still it was so good because there are many families with two boys three boys but none became priest i have only one and he became priest so joyful so you will be there for everything no i said yes but that lasted only for one year the second year i was in delhi i had to travel overnight to reach home i was not very easy so so it was it was my father's dream or kind of to have a priest now i find that to be so selfish he sent me to become a priest or he allowed me i must say with gratitude he allowed me taking all the other burdens that might come on me for the family he took it on his shoulders so that i become a priest so gratefully i remember him and yet he has that little thing in his heart my son has become a priest and any time i call he might come to me that never happened even now it's not happening praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah it's not just my case same with father michael same with father michael even when we want to be with them i think i have shared with you my when my dad had to go through an angioplasty i wanted really to be with him but it was in a situation that i could not go i could just sit at the chapel and pray so it is even when every priest is celebrating uh, the the ministry of the lord the, the sacraments of the lord there is a there is a son in the in in their heart but remember what jesus said i have to go and preach 
this is what the driving force and this must be the driving force behind everyone who is called for his ministry hallelujah hallelujah so i would like to ask you see please pray there are times when you all feel just like only a son of your mother and your father you feel like to be with them but this is there is more important thing to be done so remember us in praise the same time the same pride keeping the lord just for me the blessings for me that is also in every one of us if you ask yourself this question why have you come here for today i'm not don't answer me why have you come here for the prayer today you may have so many answers but if i look at the prayer intentions that you have put lucky that you don't put the names in it i can see what you are asking for every prayer is myself i am putting myself over there lord i want this lord i want that lord i want this healing just why don't we understand we've come here to listen to the lord i'm not saying it's wrong but it is secondary it is the subsidiary it's the accent and accessory that the lord will definitely give us but we are here first and foremost to listen to what the lord tells how the lord touches my heart through every word he preached he touched the hearts of many the lord is touching me in my heart transforming my life it's not just healing my life he is transforming life or in other words he is making me a proper child of god praise the lord every time i come into the presence of the lord the lord is making me he is transferring his likeness upon me and making me a good child of god who would forgive others who would love others who would who would talk sweet words to others but at the same time what i want i want to be the same person i don't want to change or i want all what i want is lord grant me what i pray for that's all i need but the lord clearly teaches us that is just part of your selfishness hallelujah 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 all the word all what the lord says the rest of it i'll give you don't worry i'll give you but are you open to the words of jesus are you ready to change your life mold your life according to what jesus tells you so that is what we all want to ask the lord and today we are celebrating the feast of our lady of lanka how mother mary even when she had to go through all sufferings everything she had to go through pain suffering sorrow brokenness in human terms she never questioned all what she tried was to stay with god stay with god praise the lord hallelujah in kerala there are so many so many retreat centers okay so um i met a person who came uh i met that person i don't want to explain who that person and how i met and all that so this person goes to one retreat center for one retreat for a particular intention he went once twice and thrice and certain retreat centers they have a special prayers like nine first fridays you go in a same place um sometimes that's a special devotion there there's nothing wrong in it but this person went with one intention uh, or or a healing or some blessing he wanted and we he went there and as according to that devotion he did uh, that uh, special thing nine months or so after nine months a meeting after maybe few more extra months i meet her i'm i was meeting him and i asked him uh he was telling me father i went to that retreat center okay i prayed for this intention participating as they pres- prescribed nine i didn't get it so i have come to this place to see if i will get it here so i asked if you don't get it here 
I'll go to another place. <laughs> so he is there on a spiritual window shopping. You know, we, we all do window shopping, right? Window shopping, just uh, when you have time, you just go around and get the, you know. This person is going after place, place, going for window shopping. If I get it here, that's good. If I get a little cheaper on the other place, I'll get it from here, not from here. Praise the Lord. The Lord says, that's not the spiritual journey that he is looking from us. Listen to the Lord, not the physical blessing that you are looking for. It is more of that internal peace, knowing that I am for the Lord, I belong to the Lord, the Lord is mine. The rest will come with you. That's what Jesus taught us about the providence. First you seek the kingdom of God and the rest will follow. First you seek the kingdom of God, the rest will follow. The Lord has in his mind, he knows what should be given to you in its time. We have a problem of anxiety even for little things. Even for little things we have a problem of anxiety. But the Lord does not give you in advance. He gives only on time. And that is called providence. When I was first sent to Australia, it took eight months for me to get my visa, first visa. I was waiting three months. Everybody asked me, Father, when are you going? I said, once I get my visa. Three months, nothing. So the next three months, the question was, are you not going? You know, when that quest those questions come, it's just like a little stress on you. Three months, it didn't come. So six months is already over. The seventh month onwards they are saying, it looks like God does not want you there. I just hid myself from them all because I didn't want to face those questions. But on the eighth month, that was around uh, January, I got my visa, I re reached there February and I am applying for a continued visa, longer visa. And the first sentence or the first qualification for that proper longer long term visa was you should have completed your profession or you should have completed in your trade three years. You should have experience of three years. I didn't believe myself, no one believed. It was only on first of january twenty fifteen I completed three years as a priest. I applied for my visa in 2014 June, didn't get my visa, got my visa only after 15th of January 2015. I reached there, first, first thing, I have to have three years of experience. I was ordained 1st January 2012, 1st January 2015, three years, then I am there, I could easily apply, otherwise not qualified for that visa. Praise the Lord. So when I read that, I looked at that and I looked up there. Yes, he knows better than me. All what I need is to seek his kingdom and he will provide everything for you. So today, the Lord is teaching us the spiritual pride and selfishness. I want it from you, O oh Lord, in my time, as I wish, as I would pray for. Let us keep that aside. And we keep our heart open to the Lord saying, Lord, I am ready to do what you are asking of me. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to change. And I know and I believe, I proclaim everything that I need, you will give me in time of my need, not as a human person would think, but as a child of good we think. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We ask the intercession of our Blessed Mother. All cares and anxieties that is there in our heart for our prayers are not answered. Or when our prayers are not given in human time, the time that we think, we shall pray, Lord, give me the grace to trust in you and believe and proclaim 
that you would give me in your time and that would be the best time for me because you have a plan for my future for my upbuilding for my well for my well being not for my destruction i pray mother in the seed and pray for us hail mary Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Praise the Lord.